Welcome to Exploring the Paranormal. Hosted by Heather Lee, PhD, Exploring the Paranormal offers a new, fresh look into paranormal research. Join Heather as she discusses some of the many haunted locations worldwide, discusses why these locations are haunted, hear from paranormal researchers about their personal experiences at these locations. Additionally, Heather takes a journey into the science behind the paranormal, discussing topics such as thermodynamics and the Heisenberg Principle and how they both affect paranormal activity. Now, your host of Exploring the Paranormal, Dr. Heather Lee. everyone welcome to exploring the paranormal super excited to be here today but i do want to let you guys know that we've been uh, experiencing plenty of thunderstorms in the area uh, especially if you guys watched the interview that i did with reverend sean whittington last night um lots of thunder and lightning and uh flickering of a whole bunch of um stuff uh electronic wise so if you lose me i'm sorry uh we'll catch up next week when we come back but I'm hoping, keep your fingers crossed, that these storms do not start until one o'clock like they're supposed to, but you just never know. And hello, Courtney. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today's guest is, I uh, actually don't really need to do an introduction for him, but he won't be here until 1030. Uh, Joe Frankie, I've brought him back on. He's my co-host of Passport to the Paranormal on Thursday nights. And uh, today I wanted to bring him on and put him in the hot seat. Um, usually he comes on and shares stories about his experiences with the Warrens, um, his paranormal experiences, what he got started in. Um, today, I'm going to change things up on him, and he doesn't know that yet, uh, but I'm going to be tossing a whole bunch of different questions at him, such as what are his thoughts on the tech tools, non-tech tools, science and the paranormal, um, and a whole bunch of stuff like that. So if you guys have any questions you want me to toss at Joe, feel free to put them in the comments, and I will add them to the list. And... Um, trying to think of what else. If you guys, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, it doesn't even have to be about our show topic. I am usually um, have plenty of time to answer them. If I don't get them answered right away, I'll do them later in the show, or I will do them off the air by sending a message or commenting on the comments in the show. So feel free to ask away. I'm here to answer the questions you have. Um, so before I get started with my, um, I have a little bit of a topic on something that I'm working on um, for training. Uh, as part of my shamanic life coaching course. So we'll be going over a few things. I want to get your opinions on it and kind of it, something that I did that helped me with my um, mid-year slump, I guess you would call it. So, but for those of you who are new watching the show and even those of you who've been here before, uh, feel free to comment, say hello, let me know you're watching. Uh, tell us where you're from, where you're watching from. You don't need to get into details. You could just tell us your country or state or whatever you guys, province or whatever you guys um, live it, you know, it doesn't have to be too specific. You know, we don't need your exact address. We just need to know about where you're living from, where you're listening from, just kind of have an idea of uh, who's out there watching. Uh, but then for those of you who've never watched this before or don't know who I am, I'm Heather Lee. I have a PhD in paranormal science from the Institute of Metaphysical and Humanistic Studies, and that's here in Florida. Um, I'm an author, lecturer, paranormal researcher, motivator, life coach, and educator with more than, I should change this, more than 35 years research paranormal experience. I used to say 30, but we actually calculated it and it's 35. Um, I have several books out and several more coming out, um, Haunted Southern Nevada Ghost Towns. Uh, it's back on Amazon, but you won't be getting it until late July, uh, but you can go to kind of the History Press or Arcadia Publishing, order directly from there. I have, I need to change this too. Um, I have five copies left. Um, I sold several over the weekend. Um, so if you want to get an autographed copy, reach out to me and let me know. Um, Ghosts and Legends of the Vegas Valley is available on Amazon or the History Press. I actually sold out of my copies and I have to order some, so I won't be getting any more until mid to late July myself. Haunted Florida Lighthouses. <clears throat> Great book to talk about during this show. Uh, Joe Frankie actually wrote the foreword to it. He did an excellent job. Love it. Um, he's a big fan of lighthouses, so I thought he'd be perfect for that one. 
And then either later this year or early next year, Haunted Florida Ghost Towns will be out, as well as I just started writing Haunted Florida theme parks, or not theme parks, roadside attractions. So those will be um, projects that I'm working on. So stay tuned for updates on that one. Um, for those of you who also follow Ghost Education 101, um, we have tomorrow's special guest, Johnny Zaffis, will be joining us to talk about his haunted collection, um, some of the things he's done, some projects he's working on, and his tips and tricks on helping clients because he does still help clients. And then, of course, you always can watch um, myself and my team in action on Real Haunts Ghost Towns and Real Haunts 3. So make sure you also stay tuned because there are some things behind the scenes working with motion picture video that uh, may be coming out in the next year or two. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you hadn't had a chance to watch uh, Ghost Adventures Lake of Death, make sure you check that out and uh, you might see someone you recognize um, in there partway through. That was actually, even though I wasn't there filming with them, that was a lot of fun to film and get that ready. And as I mentioned earlier, Passport to the Paranormal will not be airing this week, but we will be returning June 29th. Uh, it airs Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. And on the 29th, we have special guests, the Children of the Paranormal. So we're gonna have my, ch my son and then uh, Joe's uh, twin daughters on the show to discuss what life was like to be um, raised by a paranormal researcher. <clears throat> Okay, and um, also, Joe, can't believe it's in like a week and a half, but mark your calendars, TMCC, uh, the online classes I'm teaching, registration opens July 1st, and I'll be posting the links for that on September 25th. I'm teaching the ABCs of Paranormal Research, and on October 9th, I'm going to be doing the Ghost, uh, Ghost Hunting 101 classes. So make sure you keep an eye out. I will be sharing all of this on my Facebook pages, share it during the shows, and a whole bunch of different things can't keep up with <laughs> I'm working on it Courtney I, I can't keep up with all the books I'm putting out and uh, I can't really talk about some of the other book projects I have but there's several others that will be coming out that are not tied with the history press so that list is just going to keep getting longer and longer so <laughs> um, but I hope anybody who's gotten the books that you are enjoying them um, as much as I enjoy writing them because it's a lot of fun so real quick, I wanted to kind of, like I said, change things up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the paranormal before Joe comes on. Um, but I did receive a question from someone. Um, she reached out to me, Colleen had asked. Um, that she, is, she had mentioned that she had gotten far behind on her goals. And she just feels stuck, like she doesn't know what she's doing. And she wanted to see if I had any tips, tricks on getting remotivated and achieving her goals before the end of the year. Because I cannot believe that we are already halfway through the year. It's unbelievable. So I made a list of different tips and tricks that everybody can use. Um, so if you've, even if you haven't set a goal for this year, I mean, you can still use these tips and tricks to um, achieve your goals for the end of the year. And I always tell people having goals is a great way to keep you motivated, whether it's um, in life, in work, um, or whatever you need to do, um, whether it's finances, health, um, business, or, you know, anything like that. Um, you can set these goals and get there. And they could be as small as I have one friend who she's trying to monetize her blog. And one thing that she does is she sets her goals in little chunks. Um, like by March, she wanted to have, you know, 50 new followers. And then by, you know, June, she wanted to have 75 new followers. And she keeps upping it until she reaches her goal at the end of the year to be monetized. So she's been doing that. And um, you can even also set your goals as, you know, you want to save um, $5,000 to go on vacation and you, anything like that can happen. Um, or you want to set a goal to either go back to school or change career paths. And there's so many different things that we could do. And goal setting helps keep us focused and getting to our goals um, either faster or more efficiently. So some of the tips that I want to offer is um, of Mid-year, I always tell everybody to go back and reevaluate your goals and get back on track. Um, of course, I don't want anyone to compare themselves to uh, compare themselves to others. This I am extremely guilty of. Um, the only person I keep telling myself, the only person I need to be in competition with is myself. Can I do better than I've done in the past? Um, just because someone else is moving faster or getting things that you want faster than you are doesn't mean you're not going to. So don't compare yourself. Go at your own pace. Everybody has a bad day. Um, everybody has, you know, roadblocks. And that's what the mid-year review is all about, is um, identifying those roadblocks and moving past them. Um, again, don't worry if you're behind. There's still plenty of time to get back on track. 
um, you know, don't beat yourself up over it. Uh, I'm guilty of that as well. Um, I, I always say I need to take my own advice sometimes, but it, it's hard. I get it. Um, so you should review your goals mid-year and look at your progress. Um, instead of just saying, you know, hey, I wanted to do X, Y, and Z, say, okay, I want to do X, Y, and Z, but how far have I, you know, how close am I? How far have I come? Um, and make sure you have your goals from January that you wrote down. Or if you didn't write them down, now's the time to write them down so you have them. Because it's always a good idea to have your goals and your progress and everything written down so you can map it out. Um, I offer a, or I want to offer a seven-day um, progress challenge. And this is one thing where you break your um, goal review down into seven different days. So you're not doing it all at once and limit your time. Because if you spend, you know, three hours or more, you know, dwelling over why you haven't hit your goals, that's not going to help you. I would say 30 minutes to an hour max a day um, for each one of these tasks. So day one, you want to review your vision, your goals. Um, why are you doing this? Why do you want to achieve um, a certain goal? So figure out that, figure out your why essentially. Um, then check your goal progress on day two, you know, check from where you started, you know, to where you're at today and mark that down, you know, and also determine how much further you have to go. On day three, take a good look at your habits and routines and identify any areas of improvement or any areas that are blocking you from achieving your goals. You know, what's preventing you to do it and how can you improve that? Um, day four, get organized. I actually did this upstairs in our bedroom this weekend. I took two days and this one may take a couple days or more than just an hour. Um, clean up your workspace, clear cut clutter from your home, um, set things up the way you like it. Make sure you, you know, you can streamline any process you have, whether you work from home or, you know, even streamlining your process in the kitchen. Um, getting rid of clutter in the kitchen can make cooking dinner easier and no time is wasted. Um, day five, continue organizing and check something off of your to-do list that has been there for more than 30 days. So if you have something on your regular to-do list, um, look back at it and figure out what's been there the longest, um, or at least for 30 days. My to-do list, I have more than 100 things on there, and some of the stuff is two years old just because I keep pushing it off. And it's simple stuff, so I really, I really need to, like I said, listen to my own advice. Um, so do that. Or, you know, even you could challenge yourself to, you know, do two simple things. Or if you have a whole bunch of little things that you can do, you know, that won't take you more than five or 10 minutes each one, challenge yourself to do five or 10 in a day. And then continue with that challenge. You know, you can also challenge, I have, I know people who look at their to-do list um, in chronological order and once a day, or you can even do once a week, they go to the bottom of their list with their first item that they've added. And, or the top of your list with the first item that they added, depending on how you organize your to-do list. And they look at the oldest item and they do that once a day or once a week. And that helps make your to-do list a little bit smaller. And <laughs> unless you're adding to it, like I do every day, <laughs> um, get your planner and set yourself up for the next six months. What are you going to do um, to get to your goal? How are you going to do it? Um, one thing that I do is like Monday, Monday, I have um, my Patreon day. I have podcast day where I prepare for my podcast for the week. And then um, I work on whatever's on my to-do list. Um, Tuesdays, I have this show. And then Tuesday after the show, I work on whatever I have to do for this show to get ready for next week. Um, Wednesday's my writing day. And also my ghost education 101 day every other day. Um, I dedicate Wednesday to, oh, Tuesday's also my social media day. Um, but Wednesdays are dedicated to writing my blog for the next week, um, working on the books that I'm working on and researching. Um, Thursdays, what is Thursday? oh, Thursdays I dedicate to my um my magic stuff, so Touch of Magic, um, which is Paranormal Society, and other projects that I'm working on with Marissa. And then Friday is um, my Beachside Apothecary, where I I have a booth um, and then make things that I put in the booth and things that I take to events with me, um, whether it's my little spell jars, my lighted up wine, my light up wine bottles. Um, that's basically my craft day and getting that business organized. So you can see I have everything divided in chunks and. Um, if there's ever a day where I have free time and I'm done with everything, that's when I go back to my to-do list and I start checking off different things in there. And then day seven is um, put a system in place. Like I said, that daily routine is a great system to have. Um, and also try to find an accountability partner, a friend who you can share 
your openly share your goals with um, someone who you can cry to when you feel like you're stressed out over your goals and then someone who you can listen to and help them. Uh, I know I have one friend we haven't done in a while, but we used to be accountability partners and we would talk once a week and just to check to see where we're at on our goals. So it's a whole bunch of different ways and things that you can do. And Courtney, um, focus on one thing at a time um, too. Don't, yep, don't, don't mash it all into one day, of course. Yeah, um, that's, it's, I always joke that there's not enough hours in the day, but there is enough hours in the day if you break your tasks up to um, real, real, uh, real reality and doable goals. Um, so then some other additional tips that I have is um, get yourself a book, goal book. I should have grabbed one, but I have, um, you can use a journal that they have. You can use a notebook, um, but there are several goal books out there that help you break down your goals daily. Um, so you can use that. Uh, also write down, um, keep track of what you do daily, even if it's not associated with your goal. Um, kind of at the end of the day, summarize what you did. And then that way you can go back and identify problem areas, um, your habits, what habits, you know, have you been doing that are keeping you from achieving your goal? And then don't be afraid to revise your goal as you go. Um, sometimes things change. Um, some examples I have is ask yourself the following questions. Why or what haven't you achieved yet? Um, what has changed in your life since setting your goals in January? You might have new life goals. Are your goals still relevant? How far have you come since setting up those goals? Um, are you, how much further do you have to go? Where do you need to go from here? Um, are you prepared to put in the effort to achieve your goals? And that's an important one because not everybody is willing to put in the time and effort to um, go for their goals. And um, what might stop you? A lot of people, it's um, time. Um, some people, it's money. If money's, um, if you, in order to achieve your goal, you need money. Um, uh, others, it's motivation and um, lack of, it could even be lack of interest or, you know, just a whole bunch of different things. Um, and that's when you need to revise your goals. If you um, definitely have a lack of interest um, to do anything to get that goal done. Um, how will you overcome and uh, what might stop, you know, how will you overcome what might stop you? And are your goals still achievable? I mean, are you Let's say you had a goal to get, I'm just throwing this out there because I hear it from a lot of people. Let's say you had a goal to set 10,000 followers on um, TikTok uh, by the end of the year. And if you review your goals and it's November and you've only gotten 100 followers, that 10,000 might not be a real um, achievable goal. So you could always reset your goal um, to a lower number. You could also reset your goal to another time frame. You could also, you know, just say, okay, well, I didn't do it, you know, this time around, but I'm going to definitely do it by, you know, X, Y, and Z date. Um, and then re. Yes, hang up is inspirational signage. That's one thing I don't have on the list, but I always um, tell people you can put sticky notes on your bathroom mirrors, um, on the refrigerators, and everything like that. Um, but rewrite your goals down, even if they haven't changed. If you still have the same goals, just rewrite them down. It just enforces what you have to say. Um, use the SMART system. Um, make sure that your goals are um, SMART. Actually, I wrote, I'm like drawing a blank on that one. Let me just make sure. I'm sorry, guys. I just want to make sure that I wrote that down right. Oh, specific. I knew it wasn't. I wrote down smart and it's like I was drawing a blank on it, but make sure that it's specific and that it's very detailed, um, measurable. How can you track it? Is it trackable? Um, and that an example would be, you know, like getting followers on social media or um, earning, you know, $5,000 from a side hustle or anything like that. Um, is it achievable? Is it something that you have the tools and the abilities and the know-how to achieve? Um, is it relevant to your life? Um, getting a goal of, um, you know, I'm going to go back to it. 10,000 TikTok followers might not be achievable for some or, you know, relevant to someone who um, doesn't like social media or doesn't um, want to, re you know, make the videos for TikTok. It's just not going to work. Um, and time bound. Make sure you put a deadline on when it's going to happen. Um, and then we mentioned it earlier, work out your timeline for the remainder of the year. Um, write positive statements in present tense. You can do this on the post-it notes um, or the signs that you hang around their house. Um, you can also do this in your journal or your goal book. Um, an example would be, you know, 
envision and you're envisioning yourself at the end of the year. It's December 31st and I have successfully achieved my goal of writing 300 blog posts this year. And now I'm off to Hawaii, you know, and that would be if you set Hawaii as your re reward for writing 300 blog posts. And that's just a statement that I threw together. Um, visualize your achievements. What would the, what will your life feel like, look like, and be like once you've achieved your goals? Um, what will you say about your achievement? What will others say about your achievement? How do you feel about, how would you feel about yourself once you achieve the goal? And how will you celebrate? Um, so always make sure you revisit those goals often, um, serves as a reminder of what you're aiming for. Set rewards for achieving your goals. Even if you break your goals down into smaller chunks, um, set small rewards. I used to reward myself with, you know, Starbucks coffee, dinner out, um, weekend getaway, um, buy a new outfit, you know, do for your smaller goals and then have one big, really good goal, you know, like, um, uh, either a big vacation or buy yourself something, you know, more expensive. Um, but do those little goals around the way. Cause if you know, and you reward yourself, it's going to just put you in the right mental state and you're going to look forward to achieving your next, uh, a goal. Um, and then keep your goals in one place, use that journal and have it on your bookshelf where you can easily get to it and look at it whenever you need to. Um, a few things to remember before we uh, wrap up this topic is that you are not defined by your goal process. Um, just because you're not achieving your goals does not mean that you're, you're you know, I don't really want to say worthless, but you know what I mean, um, that you just can't do it. Don't don't let the, your progress get you down. It's not um, permanent. You can always change um, how you move forward and get things done. Um, you are only one person or you are the only person who can achieve your goals. And also remember, you are only one person. So uh, be realistic with your goals and know that nobody can help you get to where you need to be. It needs to be you getting you there. Um, and we all have bad days. I do this all the time. I, um, I call them pity days. It's just days where I just don't feel good and don't feel like doing anything. I'll do what I can. And I, you know, I'll lay down and watch TV all day. Um, I do it more often than I should. Um, but I, I do, I do do that. Or, and, um, I always tell myself, and then if you guys are like me, um, if you guys are like me, it's one of those things where, um, I then start feeling bad, um, about everything. And, um, it's I'm trying to think of the words, um, just pick yourself back up. Um, I feel bad that I'm not getting anything done or my goal is done and everything. So it's one of those things where it just tomorrow's another day, you know, you might've taken a day off and, um, just don't, don't, don't let it get bother you. And it's one of those, uh, things that I, I always tell people I'm better at telling people what they need to do, um, to help improve their lives, but I need to take my own advice. It was something we always joked about, um, when I was in network marketing, uh, I was a great, great leader in network marketing when it came to training, my team members and helping them out and getting them motivated. But then I would look at what I needed to do for my personal business in network marketing. And, um, oops, sorry. I just realized I'm, I am a little blurry, aren't I? I might have to fix that when we take our commercial break. Um, but I was always one of those that didn't do what I told them. So I always told them to do what I say, but not what I do type of thing. And, and I'm working on, as I've gotten older, I'm working on getting better. Okay. Let me just scroll through the comments here real quick. Okay. Yep. Deep dive into self look. Tell yourself it's okay. Um, exactly, Courtney. You know exactly how I'm thinking. And hey, Kelly, thank you for joining us. And um, Lee, thank you for joining. Yes, my background. I love it. It's um, a backdrop. And I don't know if you guys have seen these, but these are real wax candles, but they're light up. And I love them. They're perfect. They're perfect what I need to do. Um, took me a little while to get this done, but absolutely, absolutely love it. I feel like I always have a spirit with you. Yeah, I, I it's probably grandpa. You're right. <laughs> he tends to hang around with me. And just across from where I set up my desk is um, the doll that I feel he's attached to. And that's actually, I'll bring those dolls on on one of these shows so you guys can see them. Uh, my son says they're creepy looking because one, they're actually Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls. And one does look like Annabelle. Um, but they're mini version, so they're not the full version. Um, with 
that. And oh, Mr. Frankie is in the house. So we are going to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to try to adjust my camera a little bit while we're on that commercial break. And um, we'll see you guys when we get back with uh, Joe Frankie. No matter the questions, Ellie Weisenthal can help you find the answers. Ellie is a gifted intuitive and a natural energy healer, which she applies using the body code and emotion code healing systems, among others, to help you achieve balance for your best results. Are you looking for more clarity about which direction to follow with your life, health, or career? Let Ellie guide you. As a psychic, Ellie can provide clarity to the path you are on, so you may use your free will to change the direction of your life. Are you wanting to communicate with a loved one who's passed? As a certified psychic medium, Ellie Weisenthal can connect you with your loved ones on the other side to facilitate healing or offer closure. To schedule your appointment with Ellie, look her up on Facebook at Ellie Weisenthal Psychic Medium or email her at ellieweisenthal at gmail.com. That's Ellie Weisenthal, W-E-I-S-E-N-S-E-L. Hey everyone, I am back with Exploring the Paranormal and super excited to bring uh, Joe Frankie on. I, I don't really don't think he needs an introduction. You guys know him. He's been on the show several times before. Uh, so let's bring Joe on. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. Glad you made it. Oh yeah. yeah I'm surprised <laughs> I made it. I, I, my son asked me to play in a golf tournament yesterday. I am so sore. <laughs> I haven't swung a club in like three years. Oh, uh, you're getting old, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I tell you, I think I pulled the groin muscle. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. No, no fun. No fun. Uh, I, I didn't go golfing, but I was rearranging my bedroom. So my shoulders like through here <laughs> were killing me all day yesterday. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I went a few months ago. I found out I have multiple tears in my right shoulder mm -hmm. and the, the scan lit up like a Christmas tree. And they're like, you know what all that white stuff is? And I said, arthritis? I'm full of arthritis. So that's okay. Yeah, Courtney says you should have practiced first. Yeah. Well, you know, it could be worse, right? But yeah, I, uh, I barely had a time to warm up. I'm getting on in the first tee and I think I killed a squirrel. Paul <laughs> went right into the woods. <laughs> Poor squirrel. Uh, well, I got a couple of birdies, a couple of chipmunks. From a few trees. <laughs> seriously, I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh my God, I could barely move. <laughs> <laughs> and you're on radio shows all day today, aren't you? Uh, I have another one tonight. Yeah. Just, just, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you'll have fun on Nicole's show. I love being on her show. She's fun. Oh, she's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm looking forward to just sitting and talking. It doesn't hurt too much when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, it looks like we have everybody on the show that's been uh, watching that's watched before, but just in case um, there's someone watching that doesn't know who you are, do you mind explaining who you are and what you do? Um, okay, well, uh, my name is Joe Frankie, um, paranormal researcher. I've been doing this work for 37 years. Uh, I was a student of the Warrens way back in the 80s and 90s, and studied with Ed and Lorraine and went on a lot of cases with them. I learned a lot from them, went on lectures. And that's one of the things that helped me a lot is, is uh, attending a lot of their lectures and, uh, you know, in a, in a helper capacity. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I heard them, you know, teach and teach and uh, over and over again, it just stuck with me, you know, learned things about, you know, the Amityville case and the Enfield house and, um, you know, the, the Rhode Island case, all those cases that were made famous by the conjuring movies and things like that so mm -hmm. yeah I, i've been around for a little while i'm feeling my age and one thing i mentioned that is pretty interesting is i'm i'm about the age now that the warrens were when i met them you know uh, maybe they're a little bit older but um you know late 50s 
Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's uh, kind of kind of weird the way things come full, full circle. <laughs> and now I'm in a position where I can help teach other, or we can help teach mm -hmm. others. Because you've been doing this as long as I have. So yeah. uh, I think we make a pretty good team. You know, yeah. You and I. Yep. And I, I appreciate you every yeah. day. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just hope we help people and don't uh, cause more harm. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, no, no. But you know, unfortunately, there are. I don't want to say haters, but there's people out there that may not agree with with me or with you or with with the way the war. You there? Fought. And that's fine. I mean, that's what makes us all all different and individuals. You know. Um, however, I I I do Hello? feel we should. Can you hear me? Did I lose you? You there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was changing out. Um, Josh messaged me saying that I was delayed on his end, so I unplugged something that wasn't there before. Oh, okay. You can hear so, me though, right? I can hear you. Yeah. All just, right. Just, just making sure time. we got to play around with it. I got a new Ethernet cord with uh, internet boosters to stop me from freezing, but I guess that wasn't helping. <laughs> yeah. I once I fixed the problem from last week, I haven't touched anything. Yeah, we needed you earlier because I, my sound wasn't working, but uh, Todd oh. had his computer muted. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So oh. we, we were, I was picking on him, but <laughs> I was getting I was getting some Ben Gay and rubbing it in. <laughs> no, we figured it out after I tried different microphones and headphones, and <laughs> we finally got it worked yeah, out. Yeah, no, I got this new setup thanks to you. Uh, I got the new camera and everything. So mm -hmm. do I look okay? Yep, you do. Oh. Yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lisa's team Lee Frankie. <laughs> That's awesome. We should get t-shirts made up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll sell them at Phantasm. Hey, it, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Jeff's got a bunch of I Love Joe Frankie stickers. Right. Yep. <laughs> he well, made we'll up like a... a thousand of them, and I think he's still got a thousand left. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have his wife, wife design it for us. Oh, yeah. She does a great job at that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep, she so, she's good. She's really good. Um, so, I mean, it's been an interesting journey, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I I like, you know, I like to educate now. I like to mm -hmm. go around and speak, you know, and, and hopefully you and I are going to be doing that soon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, colleges, universities, uh, private organizations, fundraisers, things like that. You know, mm -hmm. to try to help bring along the future paranormal researchers, you know, uh, people that share some of the the same ideas and values that we do, you mm -hmm. know, it's not all about, you know, uh, getting the money shot, you know, and being on right. TV and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it's nice and it's fun to see your face on TV, but, you know, um, you want to be really helping people with their paranormal afflictions, um, mm -hmm. so to speak. So right. uh, that's what I've dedicated my life to. Uh, mm -hmm. just, just helping people, you know, and it's not all about putting up a website or a YouTube channel, even though those, those are interesting, but the people that we help, you know, want to, want to remain anonymous, you know, they don't want their friends and neighbors knowing that they think they've got issues because they think they're going to be cra crazy or, or something like that. But mm -hmm. um, that's, that's just not necessarily the case. I mean, we can go in and, and uh, help somebody and assure them that, listen, you don't have, a negative entity here or you know for lack of a better term a demon like, trying to stay away from that word you know just negative forces at work i mean um it's 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 not all about that but unfortunately when you get come into the entertainment field that's what kind of sells you know mm -hmm. the, the horror yeah. the shock value the scare the scary thing and, and i get that but mm -hmm. you know um you know more about education than entertainment of course mm -hmm. you know I can be entertaining with my personality, but, you know, uh, you just, you know, I deal with a lot of people that say that they, they've had, oh, geez, I've had this group or this group out here and they told me I have a demon and I should sell my house and move. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, 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 you say, well, I haven't found any evidence to support that, you know, and, but then it's hard, as you've heard me say, trying to talk these people back off the ledge. Well, mm -hmm. well so-and-so said I had this. You don't have this. Mm -hmm. well, what did they tell me? I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not going to speak for them. I don't know them. Never heard of them. You know, some of these people just watch too much TV. And all of a sudden you have something that 
you can't under you know explain or something you don't understand happen and all of a sudden it's it's bad mm-hmm. you know oh let us come in and they have you know 20 people show up with all kinds of cameras and computers and recording devices and you know it's it's almost become comical mm-hmm. these days i mean th- we didn't have this problem 30 something years ago did we you no. know we didn't have the internet we didn't have television we didn't have you know, well, I mean, we had Hollywood, and we had some shows back in the 90s, like, um, you know, what's that show with Tim White there? I forget the name of it. Um, sightings. Mm-hmm. You know, shows like that. But that wasn't all just paranormal. It was also right. cryptid, cryptozoology, yeah. you had UFOs, things like that. Yeah, I think Unsolved Mysteries also covered one Unsolved or two. Mystery, Robert Stack. Yep. yep. Now there's a new version, I think, out now, right, with, uh, was it, Captain Kirk there, William Shatner? Yeah, that um, unexplainable or unexplained. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're they're, they're interesting shows. You know, um, I watch some of them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because there's things I still learn. That I oh, I didn't know that, or I didn't know this existed out in Las Vegas. I learned mm-hmm. a lot from you. You know, <laughs> the tunnels and caves out in Long- Las Vegas, and mm-hmm. uh, and I'm sitting there salivating, saying, I'd love to go in there. <laughs> you know, um, Las Vegas is a fun place to investigate. I do have to say, I miss that aspect a yeah, little bit. Well, hopefully, you and I will get a chance to go out there again. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and, yeah. uh, I've got a I've got a long bucket list myself of places I haven't been to. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'd love to go over over uh, overseas and see some of these catacombs and yep. you know these castles that uh, you know allegedly have spirits, and I'm sure they probably do. These things are centuries old. Yep. You know, yep. um, so I mean, I just think that would be very fascinating, just just for the scientific and educational aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like I, you really want to understand, you know, the history of the place and what happened here, and you hear all the horror stories, and some guy gets stuck in an iron maid, put in an iron maiden for God knows how long. And <laughs> that's all cool, but did that really happen? Right. Yeah. Probably. You know, but I like to understand. Okay, well. You know, what does someone have to do to get put in an Iron Maiden, you know, or, <laughs> you know, putting on the on the stretching device, whatever that's called, and, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, um, you know, and do the do these songs, uh, souls still haunt the walls mm-hmm. of this of this establishment? I mean, yeah. we know it's possible, but well, highly unlikely. Yeah. Why would they stick around there in, in a place that caused them so much pain and torment? But mm-hmm. makes for good yeah. television or, or movies. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I get off on my. <laughs> it's perfect. I don't have to do much work while you're on. <laughs> oh, well, it's just there's, there's so many things that are fascinating out there, but mm-hmm. you really want to understand, you know, why things are happening. You know, I always tell the people I I talk to say. Ask the, the basic questions, the who, what, when, where, why. You know, mm-hmm. why is a question we may never know, uh, you know, but we, we can theorize why based mm-hmm. on our knowledge and experience. But I guess we'll never know for sure in this lifetime, maybe on the other side, wherever that is or wherever you believe that is, we'll get, we'll get some answers. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what fascinates me. That's what keeps me going. Yep. You know, no case, no, you know, no case is the same, albeit they're similar sometimes. Um, working on a case now for someone actually here in my town, nothing, nothing really major, but they had some, uh, uh, some activity that can't be explained. Mm-hmm. Um, and the funny thing is the home is 30 years old, built in 93. It was built and lived in by a friend of mine. I knew very, very well. His son and my son grew up playing baseball together. And he lived there with his family for 27 years. They just sold the place in 2019. Young couple bought the house, moved in. About a year and a half ago, they had their first child. And the child, I guess, is seeming uh, seemingly bothered by something. Mm-hmm. The child is still very young and can't really articulate what's going on. But the, the mother uh, I spoke to, she's pretty frantic about you know, her child, obviously mama bear, you know, that's your mm-hmm. child. You oh, yeah. want your child to be protected. And she's like the child and they have a little dog that seemed to be looking off into a particular area of the room or something and mm-hmm. start crying and, and seem to be, you know, unconsolable. Like they're very upset. The dog is shaking, running, hiding under the bed, you know, and she's, you know, so she put out a, um, she put out a, uh, a thing on Facebook through one of the moms groups and locally. 
They get visit mm -hmm. mothers groups where they all support one another and things right. like that, and they chat. And my daughter happened to see it. This just happened about a, two weeks ago. Um, and my daughter happened to see it. And people's comments, there must have been about 50 comments, 48, I think, comments of, you know, the uh, folks that are on this site. Like, oh, you need to call a priest. You need to go down to the church and have Father so-and-so come and bless the house. And, oh, you need an exorcist or, or you need this ghost hunting group and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. We don't even know what's going on yet. Mm -hmm. It may not be paranormal at all. Right. You know, albeit it's strange, you know, but I mean, children are very young. When they're very young, and they're very impressionable. They're very innocent. You know, there may be a natural uh, explanation for why this stuff is happening. Um, mm -hmm. Things like um, that the bathroom light was flickering for no apparent reason. And I was getting more of a sense of an electrical issue, you right. know, and uh, yeah. I, I, one of the first things I told her, I said, well, let's rule out everything else first. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, have your husband um, have the electrical system tested. You know, make sure it's properly grounded. Make sure it's, it's the wires are shielded. There's nothing frayed. Hey, you might have had a mouse in the wall that chewed through the wiring or something. You just never know. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, I, uh, I talked to her for a few days on the phone. I haven't even been there. And the house is less than a mile from me. It's not very far, but. You know, I'm not going to run out there with all kinds of equipment and set it up. And say, You don't need that. A lot of times, as you know, we just do a lot of consulting over the phone or through Zoom or something like that. And, uh, you know, find out a little bit of history of the family. You know, what's going on? Do you mm -hmm. have any, uh, have you had anyone pass in your family recently, which she had, a grandmother? Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, uh, she, she also had an old uh, bedroom set that was handed down through generations that belonged to the grandparents. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, let, let's let's start where we are and move backwards and try to see if we could figure out some kind of natural uh, explanation to why you may be having this odd activity. And so we kind of narrowed it down. I said, well, I, I think you may have a visitor there. It may be the grandmother that is visiting the child. Mm -hmm. uh, I did enlist this, the help of some of my very gifted psychic friends. Uh, I'm actually still working on my abilities, you know, but just try to gain uh, knowledge of what may be going on there. Um, so I had said to her, uh, and not that I had any proof of this, but I said to her, listen, just why don't you just walk around your home in a very calm and, uh, you know, um, uh, pleasant tone and ask, you know, Graham or Grandma or Gammy, she had a name in, in Polish that she would call her. Mm -hmm. I said, just ask her, you know, to move on. Say thank you very much for helping and watching over. And, you know, we're getting, um, you know, you, you, but, you know, if my son is seeing you, um, you know, you're, you're kind of scaring him and the dog. And uh, there were other things that happened, too, that weren't explained. But mm -hmm. um, and so she did that one night, this is like last week, and she, she sent me a message the next morning. She says, I did what you asked me to do, and last night was very peaceful. I said, great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So um, then there was another incident where she was making the child's lunch. She had to go to work, and I guess her mom was coming over to watch the child at the house for the day. And she said, I was making his lunch, and I had some applesauce, and I think she said like oranges or tangerines. And she turned around, and, and all of a sudden, it was gone. The food that she was preparing was just gone from the counter. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. She goes, no, no. She goes, then, like a minute later, it was back. Hmm. Like like it had apported somewhere. I'm like, right. I said, okay, well, I said, well, are you 110% sure that it was where you left it? Was it back in the same spot? She said it was back in the same spot. Um so I said, well, I can't explain that uh, if that happened exactly the way you're telling me. Uh, obviously, I didn't wasn't think she was lying or making that up at all. Mm -hmm. um, I said, but things like that can w and ha happen. Um, but I said, continue to do what I asked you for the next few nights and see what happens. And um, I this was late last week, I think, and mm -hmm. I haven't heard. You know, I said, listen, my phone is always on. I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning. If something happens and you're scared, call me. I may not answer if I don't wake <laughs> up. I, I sleep like a rock, but 
um, let me know. And no news is good news. I don't think I've talked to her since last uh, Wednesday or Thursday. So we're talking, we're going on almost a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to send her a note this week, just checking in, but I don't want to plant the seed, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. Well, this happened. Well, why didn't you tell me that? You know, <laughs> if anything odd or strange happens, just write it down, keep a journal, mm-hmm. uh, write everything down so you don't forget uh, anything that you can, uh, you know, back up with photos or video mm-hmm. or anything like that. Uh, so she did send me a video of the lights flickering in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had asked her if that had happened, if they had ever noticed that happening before or since, and she said no. Um, I said, well, check out the light switch, check out the actual um, light assembly. Check mm-hmm. out the electrical. Uh, so they did all that and said everything was seemed to be fine. Um, and basically, as far as I know, everything has stopped. Everything that they were reporting right. has stopped. Um, but, you know, there wasn't like dishes flying around and stuff like that. It wasn't anything like that. It was just things that they noticed that were odd and the child would get upset. So, oh, one thing she did tell me last week when I last talked to her is, her, son, her husband had gotten called into work and she was home alone and the baby would be would start crying again. Mm-hmm. Baby, I think 18 months old. To me, that's a baby. And she went up and she said what I asked her to say uh, in mm-hmm. Polish. I said, she, she said, should I say it in Polish or in, 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 you know, in English? I said, whatever you're comfortable with. She's going to understand you. You know, if that's if, if that's your grandmother and mm-hmm. she went up and she did it. And then she came down and she put the child back into bed and she said within a minute or so he was sound asleep. <laughs> I said, well, I can't tell you for sure if that was what did it or not, you know, but, you know, it certainly wasn't going to hurt. Right. You know, so a lot of this, I think, is psychological. You know, things start happening, you know, especially if you're into this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. One of the first questions I ask people when I interview them is, how much of these TV shows or you know, how many of these TV shows do you watch and these movies? And, and a lot of people are like, oh, we love that stuff. We watch that stuff all the time. <laughs> well, the seed's already been planted. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I joke around when I lecture and I ask the audience, I say, how many people here have sat and watched The Exorcist at 2 o'clock in the morning alone in the dark? You know, and usually people don't raise their hands, but I will. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well. Seriously, though, after you've watched a scary show or a scary movie and, you know, then, you know, you find out, oh, geez, I'm all alone now in this apartment or condo or house. And now you start, all of a sudden your senses are heightened to what's around mm-hmm. you. You yep. start hearing noises you can't explain or, you know, uh, smelling something or you think you smell something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then people start freaking themselves out, you know, um, when that mostly happens is when I get calls or, or emails from, uh, you know, people or, or groups that have spent time. Oh, my, my friends and I went out to a cemetery last night with, you know, with a Ouija board or something like that. And, uh, you know, they were using the board. It was the, the intention behind the board. So I don't want to scare people say, geez, I've used the Ouija board. Am I going to be, you know, <laughs> infested? No, mm-hmm. they went to the, with the intention of trying to conjure spirits. And now it's like, oh, something followed us home, and this is happening, and that's happening, and my door's opening on its own. I'm like, oh, God. You know, you just <laughs> open up that can of worms, and it's like, you know, you can't, you know, put, can't put the stuff back in the horse, you know, the old mm-hmm. thing. So, right. Yep. Very, it's, it's just fascinating work. It really mm-hmm. is. Yep. And uh, Todd actually asked a quick question. He wants to know, what's the difference between a demonologist and an exorcist? Well, a demonologist basically is just someone that studies demons. You know, uh, mm-hmm. an exorcist, in my opinion, because I'm Roman Catholic, a true and every and every faith probably has a form of exorcism. Mm-hmm. But like in the Catholic faith, you need to be trained at the Vatican in the rite of exorcism. You know, um, you have to be. You know, Father Joe down at the local parish can't mm-hmm. come and do an exorcism. He can do what we call a deliverance, which is pretty much a layman's form of, of exorcism where deliverance prayers are very powerful prayers, but they can be said, you know, recited by anyone, uh, mm-hmm. any one of us. Um, but an exorcism, a rite of exorcism is probably the most powerful way of expelling, you know, evil forces or, you know, I hate to say demonic forces, but 
negative forces. I know we've had that conversation, so mm -hmm. you've yep. taught me some there because you know the word demon basically it, it grabs people, and then when I hear mm -hmm. demon, they, I, their their eyes open wide and their ears perk up. Um, but do we really understand that? That's you know demonologist mm -hmm. studies, you know uh, demons and you know the negative energies and the things they could do. And there are certain hierarchies of demons and there's a legion and, and all this and that. And Satan, which is basically just a word that means adversary, mm -hmm. you know, Lucifer. If you believe that it all comes down to your faith. Yep. I mean, these are things that aren't tangible. And that's where faith comes in. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you believe, you know, I've actually said to priests before that kind of poo pooed the idea of, of maybe something evil being there. I said, well, Father, don't you believe in God? Oh, that's a ridiculous question. Of course I believe in God <laughs> and Jesus. I teach that. I said, well, then how come you don't believe in Lucifer? Right. You know, you know why? It's because it scares them so much. Your mm -hmm. average priest, look, priests are people first. Right. You know, your average priest, I've had cases where we've asked priests to come and just do a house blessing, and at the last minute, they'll back out. Mm -hmm. Or they'll show up, and they won't stay very long because they yeah. get freaked out by something. I mean, they're mm -hmm. just people first. Just because you wear a collar, you know, doesn't mean you're the most pious person. You need to be a really holy, pious person, you know, and have that deep, routed faith for this to actually be successful, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, so, I mean, it, it, demon, anybody can call themselves a demonologist if you go by the, the literal um, definition of the word, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. one who studies demons, you know, uh, you, you add ologist to the end of any word. You, it's some, somebody that studies that that work or 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 whatever, you know, mm -hmm. um, but that word is thrown out a lot. I mean, I've studied a lot under Ed when I was younger, um, you know, because, you know, Ed, God love him. He, he used the word di diabolical a lot mm -hmm. and, demon yeah. and things like that, whether it was actual a case of such inhuman negative forces. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. My faith likes to tell me that some of the cases they worked on were pretty bad, you know, but um, maybe not all of them. Right. You know, uh, I mean, I'm old, much older and wiser now and I, I'm capable <laughs> of independent thought, you know, but no, it's a very good question. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you look up the literal terms of it, there is a very big difference. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people out there that claim to be exorcists. I mean, you've probably heard them. You've probably interviewed some of them. Mm -hmm. And you want to be respectful, but, you know, I have a lot of doubt in my mind that you're an actual exorcist. Mm -hmm. You know, someone that can go in there and, and expel, you know, uh, this evil. Uh, I mm -hmm. mean, in my faith, in my religion that I, I grew up with, um, you know, Jesus gave us the power to expel demons, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. But the actual right, you know, by the Catholic Church, you need to be trained on that. And as I understand, you need to be trained at the Vatican, mm -hmm. uh, special courses for that. Yeah. Um, you have to do a lot of training. So mm -hmm. you're mentored by a, a senior exorcist like Father Amort, uh, yeah. who passed away a few years ago. He was, you know, the, the movie The Pope's Exorcist was based on that. Have you seen that movie? Not yet. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. Um, but the movie The Right, have you you've seen that one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The the movie The Right for your audience here, if they haven't, it's a pretty good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, came out in 2012 with Anthony Hopkins, based on the life of a young priest named Father Gary Thomas, uh, who became an exorcist. He was a very he was a very skeptical non-believer basically, mm -hmm. and um, kind of tongue in cheeks, you know, said, "Yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. I could do that." So his bishop got wind of it and said, "Okay, I'm sending you to the Vatican." Uh, to study the right of exorcism. And uh, I, I've talked to Father Gary a couple times on the phone, but it's been years. Very smart man. You can watch his YouTube videos and stuff. Um, but again, I'm going by my faith, and I never mm -hmm. push my faith on anybody. Right. You know, but this is how I was raised and, you know, dragged to church and went to uh, parochial schools my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they have people that really are agnostic or atheist. Mm -hmm. uh, how yep. do you deal with them? That's that's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult if they're not of the same faith or they don't believe in what you're telling them, you know, then it becomes very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why you uh, research different religions and network with people who are of different religions. So that way, if you have that type of case, mm -hmm. you, you can call the, cause I was um, on Reverend Sean Whittington's show last night 
and we were talking about, um, I brought up that I use Cascaria to do house blessings. And we were talking about that. And the reason why we did it is we had someone doing a Catholic blessing of the home because the mom was Catholic, but the daughter was dabbling in witchcraft. So we did both faiths in the cleansing of the home to make sure we covered all our bases. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, that's, that's good. But mm -hmm. was, did the daughter stop? Uh, the daughter uh, did not stop, um, but she ended up moving in with her dad and then the mom sold the house. Yeah, well, and that's about that all may we be good for there. the next owner because what if she's da still dabbling, it's going to follow mm -hmm. wherever she right. goes. Yep, and I even offered to help the daughter learn. You know, and that's what I mean, if you're going to dabble in anything, you know, take the time to learn from someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, and 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 it goes from for me, I'm still learning. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a case like that for me, I'd probably have to go do some digging and do my research as well. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know everything. Yep. I'll never will know everything. Yep. You know, uh, people look at people like us as experts. Well, you know, maybe in the sense that we've got a lot of years and experience, but uh, none of us will ever know everything. Right. You know, and there's a lot of people out there that know more than I do. My mm -hmm. mentors are gone now. I mean, if I still have questions, I'll go to someone else. Yeah. I'll call you come to me. Maybe my friend John, <laughs> who, who, who's been doing this longer than me, you know. Yeah. You know, so it's life is, in my opinion, it's it's a journey, but it's a it's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, up until the day you die, you're still learning. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but you and I make a formidable team, though. I think <laughs> <laughs> we're on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we we have, we share some same beliefs, and others we differ on. But that's what I love about you. <laughs> yeah. You don't always agree with me, and, and vice versa. But that's fine. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person that's going to argue with somebody, especially mm -hmm. on in a social media platform. Right. Nobody wins those arguments. You just both look <laughs> stupid. Bill you says, know. don't listen to anyone. Joe is an expert. <laughs> oh, Bill's on, huh? <laughs> okay, Bill, thank you. Stop wearing those shirts. Yeah, Bill and uh, Father Kenneth Torres is on. Not yeah, sure. that's actually something oh, I wanted I, to bring up. I, I have a list of some out-of-the-box questions to ask you that I usually don't ask you. Um, is uh, paranormal teams that wear logos when they go to um, residential investigations. And not just the little pocket logo on their shirt, the big back logo, and then they have their cars decked out and everything when they pull up. <laughs> Bill's like, here we go. <laughs> yeah, well, this is where I get myself in trouble maybe with some people. I mean, All the opinions I, that are being stated now are Joe's opinions and not mine. So don't take oh, it yeah. out. I mean, look, <laughs> That's my I, disclaimer for the show. <laughs> Well, you know, let me be let me be honest and and be serious for a second. For teams mm -hmm. that well, they need to identify themselves, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I usually when I lecture, I usually get a few people in in the audience that are part of their own paranormal team. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but there was this just this one show, and there was about four or five of them, and they were very nice, but. They came up to me after the show, and one of them introduced themselves, and I'm so and so with ABC Paranormal, and they had these T-shirts on, and and this is this is the backstory behind all this, you know, <laughs> stuff that Bill and I joke about all the time. Um, so the guy comes up to me, he's like, "Yeah, we're ABC Paranormal. We we do what you do." And I'm like, "No, you don't." <laughs> I said, "Wait a minute." I said, "What do you mean you do what I do?" Oh yeah, we we uh, we investigate that. I said, "Well." That's part of what I do. I said, but were you were you just listening to this two hour lecture? <laughs> Did you watch the slideshow? Uh, you know, so I, I you know I didn't mean to have an ego, but I was I kind of get tiffed when people say, well, we do what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know they have these t shirts on, and I, I don't know, it's across the front of my said ABC Paranormal or whatever, big big whole t shirt, and on the back of their t shirts it said investigations one hundred percent free. I don't know. Personally, I just took issue with that. And this is my personal mm -hmm. opinion. And in, in no way want to insult anybody out there that wears T-shirts, Bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult anybody. It's just not something I do or care to do. Now, if you've got a nice polo shirt or something like that with your, your group's insignia on it, that's perfect. That's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that put things on their cars and their minivans in the back of their, their truck window... Um, I don't care for it. 
I, I don't care for it myself. I don't think there's any reason for you to advertise to the public that you do this. Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, to me, again, my opinion, you're just wanting attention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that t attention is probably not going to be good. You know, because, you know, it's an attention grabber. People see that and they see you get out of their, your vehicle and they want to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, they want to come up and insult you. You know, um, I had a case, a very big case some years ago where the family was very frightened and they're like, you know, Joe, we don't want anybody, our neighbors, anybody knowing that you guys are coming. And I said, look, I'm not going to drive up in the mystery machine. I said, I drive a pickup truck. I said, <clears throat> they're not going to know. I said, if you know your neighbors, because it was a multifamily dwelling. So if your neighbors get nosy, just, you know, tell them, yeah, I'm your, your cousin visiting from mm -hmm visiting or from out of state or whatever of course i got connecticut license plates but you know i said you don't need to tell them who i am and why i'm there it's none of their business you know i just i i just firmly believe in being anonymous being very discreet mm -hmm. and, and as i always say be humble about what you do and who you yeah. are when you start getting a big ego where your head gets so big you can't walk through the door that's a problem mm -hmm. You know, yep. and that's why for many years, up until recently, which was last year, I never attended any of these paranormal conferences. Again, nothing wrong with that. It's just not something I chose to do for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yep. I don't know how well known my name is. Don't really care. Mm -hmm. You know, I, what I do care about is that people that will really need my help, your help, Bill's help, find us. Mm -hmm. They find the right people. They don't find these yahoos that want to come in and and get some, some footage or get something on tape or whatever. And then the first thing something happens, they freak out. They pack up and leave. Mm -hmm. You know, show up on a Friday night at 8 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock when they're, okay, uh, you know, I got a kid's game, ball game in the morning. I got to get out of here. It doesn't work mm -hmm. that way. Yep. You know, there are cases I've worked on where I've actually lived, moved in with the family for days and sometimes gone back there night after night for weeks, months, years, you know, and maybe we've got absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and you try to put the family's fears to rest, but, but Joe, after you leave, this happens, this happens, this happens. I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not saying they're lying or they're making it up, but in their mind, this stuff is very real. And I know I'm getting mm -hmm. off topic, but yeah. I, you know, it, it's all connected, you know? So, Wearing wearing a uh, a shirt with your team insignia on it, that's great. Mm -hmm. Wearing a billboard, I have a problem. Yep. yep. Yeah. Josh commented. He's upstairs watching, and he should be working. So Josh, get back to work. Uh, he says for resi residentials, the team should go in with no logos or any type of markings that may le let neighbors know what's going on. The family you're helping doesn't need the whole neighborhood to know they have paranormal investigators at their house. Yeah. That's true. I mean, like I said, what if, you know, you pull, you pull up in front of someone's house or park in their driveway and their neighbors see that. I mean, people are going to notice. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if you're driving a van, I, there's a place, there's a group in Connecticut. I don't even know if they're still around, but, you know, somebody had taken me a, a, a picture of the van driving down Main Street in whatever town it was. And on the sides and on the back of this van, they had this big logo, mm -hmm. you know, almost like the Ghostbusters logo with the slash through it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, yeah. what, you, what is your purpose for mm -hmm. having that? Yep. You know, it's just, it's what I call the look at me syndrome. People want that mm -hmm. attention and they yeah. thrive off of it and they have to have it. And when they don't, they don't get it. They have a tantrum. Mm -hmm. You know, why is so-and-so get, get to be on this show? Or, you know, why is this one getting interviewed? Well, who cares? You know, mm -hmm. what I care about is the people that really need the help that are having some kind of affliction get mm -hmm. find the right people not not right. just me there's a lot of gifted people a lot of them are on this show mm -hmm. that can help you know yep. so uh, i yep. i just want them to find that person or team that can help them and not mm -hmm. be looking for the money shot or whatever yep. um, yeah it yeah. just it just drives me bananas <laughs> it, it yeah, does. Kelly says that they leave it up to the client, um, but she does agree with Josh for the most part. Um, but if the client wants, they will not wear their shirts. Um, they'll take the magnets off their cars and any other team identifiers, and they use ID badges so the client can uh, recognize mm -hmm. and re remember them. Right. 
I mean, I agree you should have some identical form of, uh, you know, um, you know, like your li- driver's license or maybe a, a team um, membership card or whatever. I mean, I have one. I don't usually carry it with me, um, to be honest with you. It's kind of hanging up over here in my room. But, you know, I have one um, through the foundation that mm-hmm. tells, you know, who I am and my picture on it and stuff like that with a line through it. Um, <laughs> so it's it's not all bad idea. It's just the people that drive around town with this kind of stuff, I don't understand what the real motivation is. You know, I mean, are you hoping someone will see it and say, oh, yeah, I think I have a ghost and I'll call these people? That's not being in it for the right reason. Mm. If, if you ask me, again, all my opinion, you know, and then there may be people that disagree, and I want to hear that, but mm. be respectful about it. Right. You know, uh, I would never disrespect anybody for their beliefs. Bill and I tease each other about the shirt thing, but. You know, the, the shirts of Bill and his team where, you know, all kidding aside, are very professional. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Although I have to tease him because he teases me. <laughs> uh, um, and then here's one question I've been wanting to ask you. I, I kind of think I know your opinion on it because you're mm-hmm. more old school. But what are your thoughts on all these tech tools? Like envision Bill's table at Phantasm last year. Um, what are your thoughts on the SLS, the spirit box? Well, and again, I don't want to get myself yelled at here. <laughs> I I am old school because I'm old, you know. Um, I believe there may be something to some of these machines. Uh, I trust my friends, my good friends like Bill. If he tells me that he's got a lot of good evidence with it, I have no reason to doubt it. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I don't, um, I don't give a lot of credibility to it. Like, you know, I know I joke around about the cat balls a lot and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know. Just because you're getting spikes in EMF readings doesn't necessarily mean you've got a ghost standing in front of you. I mean, the world is just a big magnet Mm -hmm. surrounded by a magnetic field. I mean, you know, it could suggest other things. We were on a case recently where we had some spikes in EMF in certain areas of the home that were unexplained. However, most of the spikes were coming from the side of the house where the secondary power lines came in, you know, and they weren't everywhere in the house, but certain areas of the house mm-hmm. it was an old house i think 1850 somewhere around that that era so what's going on inside the walls i don't know uh mm-hmm. how you know how um how upgraded is the electrical system are there any frayed wires is something not grounded properly there's a lot of you know natural or scientific explanations for this but all you see on television and through the magic of editing too but all you see is you know s- Someone's asking a question and all of a sudden the lights go off and everything. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, was it edited to look that way? I have questions. Right. You know, but yep. even still, that doesn't suggest to me that there's a ghost walking by and it's setting off this this device, whether it be a cat ball or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so um I, I mean, some of these things are pretty expensive. I mean, yay, capitalism, the people that make these things are making, you know, <laughs> a, a ton of money. Um you know, no one forces you to buy them, but just because you see some some person or group on TV using some of these devices, I've had people say, "Oh, I'm saving up to buy this, you know, fifteen thousand dollar Fleur camera." Or, you know, I'm like, you know, I used to use it in my industry before I retired. I was environmental health, safety, and security, and I used to use. Uh, we had a Fleur uh, device for. Mm-hmm. Uh, checking uh, the panels, the electrical panels and stuff like that for, uh, you know, the heat signatures and things like that. So um, do they work on, you know, ghost ghost uh, investigations? Uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't afford to go out and buy a 15000 I mean, they're probably cheaper now, but um, I mean, I, for free, I could put the app on my phone. Mm-hmm. You know, the SLS, I don't really understand a lot about that. I mean, I see how it's, it, it, it it works. Uh, I've watched it on television. I've looked it up on the internet. I'm like, it's interesting. You see a stick figure, but you know, if I put, if I put the SLS on Hannibal over there, it's going to go off. Right. Yep. We, we did it. Uh, Was it your show? Our show we did it on? No. I did it on a show recently. I I have the app on my phone, you know, not that I ever use it, but I, I just to try it out. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, Ghost Tube or um, I, I don't even know what some of these apps mm-hmm. are called. I, I I just scratch my head and, you know, I, I don't believe in them. 
Mm-hmm. I believe that if there's something of intelligence that wants to communicate, it can do that. Yep. It can definitely yeah. do that. And it could do it through regular means, you know, like mm-hmm. if you're sitting there and listening to a recording and I do that, I have recorders, I have magnetic tape recorders, digital recorders. If it's not a class A EVP where it's just clear as day mm-hmm. and you cannot explain where this noise is coming from or this voice or whatever, I discount it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't want to be listening to this sea of, of white noise <laughs> and like, oh, wait a minute, I think I just heard my name. Yeah, yeah, play that back. You know, no, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. Yeah. I think that if there's something that's intelligent that wants to communicate, that it can. Again, mm-hmm. my opinion. Yep. Now, I'm sure a lot of people out there have gotten great evidence with some of these devices. Um, maybe it's evidence that I can't compl- explain, you know, but that doesn't really tell me that it's a spirit or a negative entity or poltergeist, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but Bill, I, God, he's got so much equipment. I, I yeah. was in awe. <laughs> He, he did state that 90% of that equipment he doesn't like, use on residentials. I'm like, he drives around in an 18-wheeler with his equipment. <laughs> right? And that's and that's great. And a lot of this equipment does a lot of good, I'm sure. But I uh, I can't afford to buy the stuff. My wife would divorce me probably. <laughs> you know, I spent our retirement savings on ghost hunting equipment. That's why people buy cameras. I have what everybody else has. I have video cameras and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, my Canon camera I, I just basically all of my tools fit in a suitcase mm-hmm. yep. you know uh, you know along with my bible and my crucifix and my blessed uh, rosary beads my rosary beads given to me by lorraine mm-hmm. all this stuff because i have faith in this stuff mm-hmm. you know yep. don't only always need to pull it out but i never know what i'm going to experience mm-hmm. if i'm going somewhere you know based on what people are telling me is going on i'm going prepared you should mm-hmm. always go prepared you know, um, hopefully that answers the question, but <laughs> I don't, I don't give a lot of credence to it, but mm-hmm. there may be something there uh, to me. It isn't scientifically proven, mm-hmm. you know, so. Yep. So I'm going to take that on the other side and ask you, what are your thoughts on non-tech tools such as um, spirit boards, pendulums, dousing rods? Yeah. And I know <laughs> why you're asking out of your that. head. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> just... um, again, because of my faith, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't like any form of divination, mm-hmm. like Ouija boards and tarot cards, and, and and even you know seances and 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 spirit box sessions. To me, you're opening yourself up. Mm-hmm. To me, that that that's for divination is basically seeking uh, information about the future using supernatural means. But you know, it's like you know playing with the Ouija board, saying you know what are the six lotto numbers for tonight or something like that. I mean, believe me, if I thought it worked, I'd probably use one myself. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's something that we refer to as doorways, uh, opening doors that, you know, you don't know what's on the other side. Mm-hmm. I've had people, you know, kids, teenagers, uh, or, you know, kids to me in their 20s that used to use these things. And I'm like, well, you know, we get a lot of information from the board and it answers our questions and blah, blah, blah. And, Oh, well, don't worry. It's just the spirit of a little girl or a little boy or whatever. I said, how do you know that? Mm-hmm. I said, oh, well, because it told me. <laughs> okay. So it can't be something more sinister that's lying to you right. just to gain your trust. You know, it's like, uh, you know, what I tell people, it's like opening your front door and saying, hey, yeah, come on in. Mm-hmm. What are you letting in? Yeah. What are you letting in? And are you prepared to deal with the consequences? Uh you know, of, of what you just let into your life. Mm-hmm. You know, you let not, not, not so much let in your home, you let in your life and then people get attachments that they can't get rid of. And then they call people like us and they're like, you know, I need you to get rid of this. They said, no, 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 I'm not going to get rid of anything. You're going to get rid of it. You mm-hmm. brought this upon yourself. I will help you. I will guide you. I will educate you. I'm not going to come in with a proton pack on my back. You know, it doesn't work that way. That's, that's TV. Oh, maybe Bill has one. I don't know. That's what he said. He says for once he wants to actually go to a client's house with a proton pack on. <laughs> well, I can, can see him doing those? that. Can we get those on the internet maybe? I don't know. Everything well, contact that ghost uh, busters group here in Florida. Amazon. <laughs> Borrow one oh, of yeah, theirs. Oh, the ones with the, with the costumes? Yeah. 
Those guys are cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. I want one of those actually. There, it's um, they've all added me as friends on Facebook, and I love following their little adventures. They go to different conventions and farmers markets, and uh, so you know, I thought that was so cool last year when we saw those guys. Here we are, a picture taken with them. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's that's really neat. But yeah. when you you know when you when you put all kidding aside and you're serious, you know, I tell people, look, don't don't spin the wheel and take a chance. Why should you? You know, because you're just putting yourself, your family, your home at risk because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're inviting in. Yep. I've seen too much of it. I've seen, I've worked on a bunch of Ouija board cases throughout the years. And, you know, um, we, we, we just, there was one case in Danbury, Connecticut, where we tried to burn the board and it wouldn't burn. I mean, mm -hmm. literally we doused it with lighter fluid. They put it in the grill. And it would the outer edges burn, but the board itself would not burn to the fact where everything would get black and you couldn't see the writing anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and Ed was still alive at the time. And I called him. He's like, Yeah, you need to take that in the backyard and dig a hole. He goes, dig mm -hmm. a hole about three feet down, consecrate the ground and bury it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's how I learned. Yep. You know, I bet that that board, if you dug it up today, it'd probably be in, intact. <laughs> So that was there. probably 30 years ago. Yep. I don't I don't remember the address, but I remember mm -hmm. it was in Danbury. Mm -hmm. I remember I remember the town, but I don't know Spring Street or something. But these kids and they you know they were young. They um they would use the board just about every night mm -hmm. to ask questions about their futures. And one of the girls in particular kind of got very withdrawn. You know, she, she was very withdrawn and then she would get scared and she was begging and pleading them to stop using the board. Mm -hmm. And um, they they wouldn't for some reason. Finally, they called us and I said, what are you using it for? And you know, I said, oh, well, we want to find this out. Or find I said, get rid of it. I said, let's get rid of it. And like, well, w would you take it? And I'm like, oh, I, I don't want it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people. Like, oh, man, I'll take it. I'll buy it from you. No, no. It, this isn't a game. There are people out there that buy and sell them, collect them. What's the point? Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, what's the point? In my, like I said, in my opinion, what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, so we buried it. We left it there. The kids were in college. Then they went to WestCon. Uh, they graduated, became adults. I, I, I don't know what happened to them. I didn't keep in touch with them. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they're fine today and maybe have their own families and maybe preaching to their own kids about not using this kind of <laughs> stuff. But, you know, you know, it, it's there. Are, I have a lot of friends that use this stuff mm -hmm. and maybe they use it successfully. I just I'm not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable with it. Say, well, I've been using this for 20 years. I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? Spirits don't come on your time. They come on their time, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe you're, you, something will happen way down the road in your life. And 20 years later or whatever, and you're never going to go and say, geez, I used the Ouija board when I was 15 years old. This must be why. This is mostly why this tragic event happened. Right. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go there. Yep. No, um, Josh wants to know: Isn't an EVP session just a different way of opening the doorways, uh, similar to a Ouija board? It is. You know, the board is just a game. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the intent behind it. You don't need a board. You can make your own out of cardboard and paper. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. In my opinion, a spirit box session is you're inviting these things in. Is there anybody here? I mean, you see it on TV all the time. Oh, yeah. Anybody here wants to communicate with me? <laughs> Why? Who are you? <laughs> you know? I, I would have laughed if Hannibal fell off the shelf at that moment. <laughs> well, I've had stuff happen during <laughs> interviews. That's Jeff. Mm -hmm. Something happened with my ghost over here when we, when we were on an interview, you know, a year or two ago. <laughs> I mean, weird stuff does happen around here, but I don't give it recognition. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if I feel that there's something bad here, I'll just say, get the F out of my house. Or I'm going to make you do laundry. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not impervious to this. I'm not. I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm not beyond you know being affected by things. I'm just smart about it, and I protect myself. I had a friend. Re this was recently, who um, I sent her a photo of my home, and didn't tell her it was my home. And I, and I wasn't trying to insult by insult her by testing her abilities, but what she came back with, I thought was kind of funny. And I said, here's a picture of a home. Could you give me a read on what you think is, if there's anything going on there? Mm -hmm. And she literally said, well, emailed me back or messaged me back. She goes, 
this has never happened to me before, but I can't get in. Whatever, it's it's blocking me. I can't get in. <laughs> she goes, but I do feel something in the lower left-hand corner. There's a window, and that's my room here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I just thought that was interesting. You know, yeah. believe it or not, I, you know, but she's like, it, it's like I'm being blocked from seeing this house is protected. It's like in a snow globe, and you just mm-hmm. can't get in. You know, but I do that for everybody. Yeah. And I tell people, you know, one form of protection is to envision yourself in a bright light, just like, like you're in the middle of a snow globe and nothing can mm-hmm. penetrate it. Yep. But it, but it's not, you know, it's not a physical, tangible thing. It's it's the faith. Right. It's the faith. Yep. And, you know, again, all based on my faith and my religious mm-hmm. background, but I'm sure there are people out there that have different views or, or a similar uh, a similar view, but I'm always trying to be careful not to insult anybody because it's the last thing I ever wanted to do. I would no. never insult anybody or their beliefs or whatever. This is just things I've done for the last 37 mm-hmm. years. Yep. And it's worked for me. Mm-hmm. And maybe people have other uh, things that work for them and that's fine. You yep. Know? It's all in what you believe in. Yeah. Just be okay. careful. Just, and... uh, that's the biggest thing that worries me is that people that aren't careful, they're careless reckless Mm -hmm. and then and then they have a problem that you know can definitely uh spiral out of control for them Mm -hmm. and um what are your thoughts on paranormal tourism (laughs) uh you mean like haunted lighthouses stuff like that (laughs) um uh, it's it's more or less um the people who um i guess i should have said more or less urban exploration it's not that um the thrill seekers, the ones that go to abandoned locations that they really shouldn't be at because they don't have permission to be yeah, there well, to try to capture something. I mean, obviously, you know, anytime people ask me where places are, I usually don't tell them. Mm-hmm. Or if they know where they are, I say, I'll, I'll tell them, please seek permission. Even if you're going to a cemetery, mm-hmm. most, if not all, cemeteries close at dusk. Right. You now they're open to the public, but at dusk, um, whether there's a sign there or not, it, it usually, you know, means they close at dusk and ask permission. Uh, Call the cemetery itself, cemetery association, you know, can't get a hold of it. Call the police department in that town and say, hey, this is who I am. This is Mm -hmm. what car I'm driving, my license plate number. You want to look me up? You know, um, I wanted to go in and take some photographs. I'll be very respectful. I'm not going to cause any damage. Most of the time you're going to get a no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, please don't. If my officers see you, they're going to kick you out kind of thing. Um, but ask that permission anyway. Now, for the people that don't ask or ask, get turned down and go anyway. Mm-hmm. Good luck. You right. know, I. You know, what are you looking for? Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you looking for in a dark old cemetery? I mean, the spirits don't—they're not going to hang around where their bodies are or were from 100 to 300 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're cool. I love history. I love mm-hmm. old cemeteries. You know, I've gone to cemeteries at night and t- t- <clears throat> taken photos. That's one of the first things I learned when, when I was with Ed. And I told you that story where I left the lens cap on. <laughs> I was taking pictures. This was during the day, though. But it's like, yeah, take pictures of these old stone, uh, uh, you know, stone um, uh, formations. And, and the oxidation in the stone sometimes will look like a face looking out at you. Mm-hmm. Like, we call that pareidolia, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but some of them are pretty, pretty interesting. And. I'm going around taking pictures. I'm like 20, 21 years old. And, you know, it's like, uh, Joe, you got to take the lens cap off. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed, yeah. you know, uh, but I was excited. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm hoping when I get this film, uh, you know, uh, developed, I'm going to have faces in the headstones and stuff. But now I'm like, you know, urban explorers, the, yeah, the thrill seekers, they usually don't ask permission. They break into old abandoned buildings or, old hospitals, uh, insane asylums, what have you, um, you know, yeah, they have that allure to them and mm-hmm. you know, it looks like an old creepy place. It's all overgrown. No one's been in there for God knows how many years, but number one, as a safety professional, it's, it's not safe. Right. The, the physical structure of that building could not, may not be safe. You could fall through a floor. Something could crash down on your head. You can get hurt or worse. Mm-hmm. You know, forget about the paranormal aspect of it. You know, um, 
I, I, I don't agree with it. I, I don't agree with doing it. And this is because I, I do things differently. Mm -hmm. I do things to help people. I've told you many times, I want to help people and I want to educate people. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go around. I don't have the time anyway, but I don't need to go around finding all the haunted places, breaking in, climbing over fences. I'm too old for that, you know, um, too fat for that, <laughs> you know, and then go in there and especially alone. So people should never go places alone. And there are mm -hmm. a lot of things out on YouTube where you see people by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least they project themselves as being alone. I don't know if they have somebody else with them filming them, but um, no, I, I, I frown on that. I think that from a safety aspect, it's not a good idea. Uh, you don't know if there's going to be someone in there, maybe a homeless person is living there and they could attack yeah. you, rob you, beat you up, hurt you, kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, people need to think about all this stuff before they go in and try right. to do this stuff. I mean, Think about your personal safety. Forget about the paranormal aspect of it. Uh, although, with all that being said, I have watched YouTube videos and seen a lot of interesting things and say, well, if that's real, that's interesting, but I have questions. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, bricks flying. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of this stuff is probably staged, but then it's presented as real. Mm -hmm. or, well, this is a recreation. Well, if it's a recreation of what you think you saw, you should right. say that. Yeah. Don't film it. Film the recreation and tell people that this is what we caught while we were there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just that's that's just lying. Let's just call yeah. a lie a spade a spade. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually, it's for some kind of gain, whether it be monetary gain or um, boosting your ego or your fame factor or something like that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, people that do it to each his own. You know, God bless them. I just that's not what I do. And if people are looking for that, then don't call me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, I, I've turned down more TV shows than I've been on because I'm not interested. I'm not interested in some snot-nosed 25-year-old producer telling me what to say or where to stand. <laughs> or, well, we want you to do this. You know, We're, we're going to do this. We're going to tie fish in line to this. Believe me, it's happened. Mm -hmm. You're going to tie yeah. fish in line, and then you're going to promote it on television or whatever, that this really happened? Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, how many of the people that are out there – that are real paranormal investigators, how many times have, have they seen that happen mm -hmm. where things are just basically faked? Right. You know, because if you're on a TV show and you're out filming in a location for a couple of days and you're under pressure to make episodes that are palatable to your viewers and believable, mm -hmm. how many times have you been on cases where nothing's happened? Right. Yep. You know, how, many, how many caves and tunnels have you sat in going, okay, I'm here. <laughs> Oh, anybody want to talk to me? I mean, you'd sit there for hours and days and nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Well, are you telling me just because you go out there with a film crew and a sound crew and a lighting crew and everything, that's when stuff happens? Yep. I mean, come yeah. on, don't insult my intelligence. It just it doesn't it's, work that way. Yeah, it's like when we were filming um, for the TV pilot up in Goldfield mm -hmm. and we were at the uh, um, Florence Mine. And with the film crew, very little happened when they were with us. But the minute they packed up and went to their hotel, we had activity after activity at night. <laughs> sure, it can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen. Yep. It was it's like not going to happen on cue. Right. Yep. It's like, okay, cue the ghost. And, and it's like they knew the minute the film crew left for the day, that's when they all came out. <laughs> yep. And I'll tell you what else grind my gears is say something does happen. Mm -hmm. And either, number one, they run away. Because they're frightened, you know, mm -hmm. dude, run, like the old ghost ghost uh, hunters show, <laughs> dude, run, and then they made a whole marketing campaign about that. That's not funny, right? That's not funny to me, you know. But there was a show I watched recently where they allegedly caught something in the distance, and then they left it at that. I'm like, well, what? I'm screaming at my TV. And my wife's like, what are you yelling? At? Who are you yelling at down there? I'm like, go after it. Mm -hmm. You see Bigfoot? I oh, this drives me nuts. Oh, you got you got me. Now you opened a can of worms. You know these Bigfoot videos. They're always shaky and blurry and from a thousand yards away. Uh, I see a Bigfoot walking through the woods. I got my forty-five on my hip. I'm going after it. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't. You know. I I'm I'm going after it. I mean, you, that's the money shot right there. You get an interview with big with a Bigfoot, but. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're always, you know, even these ghost videos, it's like you'll watch them and like, wow, that's interesting. And then it cuts off and they'll say, oh, we, we haven't uh, been able to contact this person or whatever. 
I'm like, well, and I'm like, what happened? Show me more. And then that's it. They just, right. they, lift, they leave you. And I, that's their intention. Mm -hmm. leave you, you know, you're going to believe what I've shown you, and but you're not going to get any answers. Mm -hmm. You know, but it drives my, me nuts. I'm like, especially with the Bigfoot thing, because I'm into the Bigfoot thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well, why haven't they found a body yet? You know, yeah. um, you know, why we haven't gotten my concrete evidence where, you know, things 10 feet from you, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the Patterson film from the 60s. I mean, that's pretty cool. Right. I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look like a guy in a monkey suit. Mm -hmm. You know, not for that era, era, you know, but, you know, it's like, well, why don't you walk after it? Follow it home or something. I don't know. I get all fired up. I need a drink. No. Well, not a real drink. Powerade. Zero. Because I'm fat. <laughs> yeah, Bill just sent me the photo from uh, the convention last year. With, with all of us. With the Ghostbusters. Oh, I love that. The Puff Those Marshall guys were really cool. <laughs> they were really cool. That I got no problem with. Because that's fun. Mm -hmm. yep. That's fun. Yeah, I, I actually want to reach out to them and actually take them dressed in their full gear to a location to investigate just to see what type of activity we get. <laughs> no wrong with that. Look, I don't have a, I'm not opposed to people doing public investigations as mm -hmm. long as they're billed as entertainment. Mm -hmm. You yep. can't have 100 people investigating a place, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and I mean, that investigation would be so, you know, I, it, it, you, you just can't do there's too much energy there mm -hmm. you can't have 100 people and let's say well for you know for entertainment we're you know we're gonna we're gonna do a lecture and then we're gonna go investigate i don't mm -hmm. know the hoover house or whatever this this old haunted inn or something i like those they're cool but i'd like to be invited and go by myself or with right. us or something i don't yeah. want 100 people around i'm actually doing one for the mm -hmm. my town here uh we have a, an old um train station that houses our adult education department. Mm -hmm. And every year they put on this lecture series that I do. And this year they asked me if I'd be willing to take a group of people. I think we're going to cut it off at 10. Mm -hmm. and I said, well, yeah. I said, but, you know, the woman I deal with, uh, Heather, I said, well, you need to be there because you know this building. I'll walk around with you. Mm -hmm. I'll tell people, you know, I'll take some photos of this, that, or up. But, but I don't expect to see or hear anything. Right. You know, but... You know, going in, it's supposed to be a fun event. Mm -hmm. and I'll try to educate as much as I can, and I'm sure I'm going to yuck it up with everybody. But <laughs> you know, that's a fun thing. That's not a serious investigation. Right. You know, because Heather, she wants me to investigate it. I said, well, mm -hmm. then I'll have to, you know, schedule a time where I can go in. You know, I, I want to say by myself because it probably would be, although I'm hypocritical there because I tell people never to go alone. So she'd mm -hmm. probably be with me, so I wouldn't be alone. Right. You know, but yep. if, if you're building something as, as you know, fun or it's a fundraiser, that's fine. I don't have a problem mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. But don't expect to capture anything. Yeah. Yeah. I no, mean, my, always... my favorite is is um when you go in with a like another team asks you to come investigate with them because they need help covering the building because it's so big and you're on one floor and they're on another floor, but yet they whip out the spirit box at full volume mm -hmm. and you could hear it, you know, one or two floors down, and it's like, Well, there goes all my evidence. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it would definitely, uh, that would definitely be a problem. Yeah, yeah uh, and that's I what mean, people need to understand about these uh, tours and stuff like that. Well, that's where the education part comes in. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're doing a tour, I, I think, uh, I don't want to badmouth Waverly, but Waverly, I was invited to mm -hmm. by another team years ago. And I said, well, that's very nice of you. I said, well, let me think about it. You know, I mean, well, I didn't realize, like, well, it's only going to cost X amount of dollars. And I'm like, no, no, mm -hmm. no, you don't understand. I don't pay anybody to investigate their place because mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll just say thank you, but I pass. Right. I'm like, I thought you were inviting me to come assist you, but mm -hmm. then I found out that they have tour guides and they take a group of, I don't know, say up to 10 people mm -hmm. and that you go floor by floor. Right. Okay. It's like, it's like, what is this? Like a Disney ride? Okay. Okay. Floor uh, four is clear. You can come up now. I'm like, no. And then from what I understand, I don't know for sure, but they have a gift store or a gift shop mm -hmm. yep, that they you do. need to pass through. I'm like, look, I, I get it. I mean, you own this place. If it's safe for people to go in and they want to spend the money and have a good time, I have nothing against that. Mm 
mm-hmm. but it's not going to be. Yeah, maybe something will happen that's unexplained. But how do I know there's not so many rolling balls down the hallway or something just for that effect? Right. That, I mean, yeah. I, look, I, you know, I got the biggest sense of humor on anybody. I don't mind having a great time, but mm-hmm. feel it as such. Don't say this is going to be a serious investigation and tell me I got to go with a group and tour mm-hmm. floor by floor. And then you got to, you know, buy a T-shirt at my or, or a coffee mug at my gift shop. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't do that. Now, people out there may love that stuff. And that's fine. Mm-hmm. God bless you. I, I just don't because, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm old school and, you know, I don't have the time or the inclination to do that stuff. Yeah. It's, it's it, it, not for me. Kind of like going to a certain museum in Vegas and having a midget clown jump out at you in the clown room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to. I want to go down to Key West and hug Robert. That's what <laughs> Bill was saying. I'll give him a hug, real seriously, respectfully. Can, mm-hmm. I, can I hug the doll? If they let me, I would. You need to ask Robert if you can hug him. Hot Robert, do you mind if I hug you? <laughs> and if he answered me, I'd be. Like, <laughs> Uh, Jeff can't believe you're on the show again. I'd be careful, Jeff. I might have Joe replace you when you're supposed oh, to be on the show in a couple weeks. Here's the question, Jeff. Why haven't you had me on your show? Yeah. Is this something I said? Probably. I was going to say, I've been on his show. <laughs> it's been a while, but I've been on his show. Um, <laughs> Are you supposed to be working? No, oh, he works for himself. That's right. <laughs> and Probably. then he wants to know, what are your thoughts on snakes? Snakes are pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Snakes That's going to be your awesome. theme song when you come up on stage when we're speaking. I like snakes. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Inside joke. Then, oh, he says, don't forget the Joe Frankie merchandise is available. So you're just as oh. bad as Waverly's gift shop. <laughs> well, you know what? Somebody's got to make a buck somewhere. How much yeah. have we made, Jeff? I, I think <laughs> we're in the hole by $1,000. <laughs> Like, Bill's like, hey, wait, I've never been asked to be on Jeff's show. <laughs> Bill says, don't feel bad. Uh, basically, he's never been asked to be on Jeff's shows either. Either. So, And Jeff says he just doesn't yeah, have time right. to do it anymore. I mean, what's up with that? I mean, you know. I mean, Jeff, if I can host three shows a week, he could host one a month. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a show this week, do we, right? <laughs> no. No, this week the radio station's taking the last oh. half of the week off. And then next um, week we're good with the kids, I think. Yep. Aiden's all ready for it. Yeah, well, I the girls said they would. I'm like, don't back out of me because you're making me look a fool. So uh, for people that don't know, on our show a week from Thursday, we asked our children, you know, our adult children, to come on. And I guess the theme is going to be what's it like to be the child of a paranormal investigator. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and then my girls are probably going to say, Dad never lets me go with them. I, and Aiden goes with me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, well, he's been going way, with he, me. Was, he's 18 now, right? He's 19 now. Oh, 19. Sorry. Yeah, but he's been um, going with me since he was 15. My twins, uh, you know, I haven't brought them on an actual investigation. I've brought mm-hmm. them to places I've been, but not like private residences. But my girls are 24 now. And mm-hmm. my son's interested too. I don't know if he's available though. He works at the prison. I think he's going to be working that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Aiden, his first investigation we were doing, um, it was a Halloween. It was a haunted house Halloween event at the museum that I did a lot of work with. And they turned the entire mine into a haunted house that kids could run through. And they would let us go every half hour. They gave us 10 minutes to go in to show people what it was like to be a paranormal investigator and do mini investigations inside the mine. Mm -hmm. And um, during the, he was, and Aiden was going in with everybody and one of the uh, investigators that I work closely with back in Vegas, he told Aiden, before we go in, remember to ask out-of-the-box questions. Yeah. And when he came out, Aiden was the only one who got responses. But he was asking questions like, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Is the earth round or flat? Uh-huh. He's just, he's throwing things out there. And he was getting responses. It was kind of interesting. You, know, you, you made a good point because, you know, you could have a couple of people with you and maybe one person will get responses and nobody mm-hmm. else will. Yep. Well, how come you're getting all this? I'm getting nothing. It's happened to me. I'm you more might, likable my, my than you. My buddy would get a lot of stuff and I'd get nothing. I'm like, I guess they don't like me. Right. You know, yep. uh, maybe they're drawn to certain people's energy. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, yep. again, questions we're probably never going to know the answer to in this lifetime. Nope. But that can nope. absolutely happen. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. No. And Jeff, your show is great. He's Jeff saying his show is horrible, but his oh, show no, is great. Not, we Jeff. need to do another power hour. I and this... the, I tease the crap out of you, Jeff, yeah. but I love and respect you, and you have a great show. You do. But yeah, Jeff's we, a we, very, very good investigator. Yeah, we need to do another power guy. hour, and, and uh, this time I can drink, and we'll just need a different moderator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be great if we had, if we had a show like um, the Dean Martin roasts. <laughs> Yep. And we all and we were all on the dais, <laughs> <laughs> and we just took turns roasting each other. How many people would watch that? Let's take a. We poll. need to do that at an event, like at Phantasm. Well, yeah, or, we could do that. You yep. know, uh, Bill, let's set that us up at Phantasm. Yep. Yeah. We'll just uh, all of us will be up there, and we could just roast each other. <laughs> you know, I guess I would be the favorite target, but that's all right. Yeah, we we just need to make sure anybody who we have on the panel won't get upset with anything we may or may not say. <laughs> Oh, come on. You, no, life's too short to get upset. I don't get so upset. You can say anything to me. I don't care. I did, I, I did last night. I told Todd what I said to you last night in chat, and he just died laughing. I know. You're always picking on me, but I love it. I don't mind. Because you know what? All seriousness, we're, we're, we're only kidding. Mm -hmm. You know, we would yeah. never, ever insult anyone, let alone no. each other. Right. You know, and we and we yep. don't all have to disagree. I mean, we don't all have to agree. Last year at mm -hmm. Phantasm, we had some pretty lively debates. Oh, yeah. I, and a couple was, of them were kind of eye-opening for me. I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty yep. good perspective. I never thought about that before. Yeah. That's true. And, and I was like, shocked yeah, I on the topic. Of... You, you made me think about a couple of things. Right. And maybe I did. I don't know. Yep. And I but was shocked, too. We're a good team. Because everyone um, usually fights me on the topic of experts. And I was really shocked that Bill was on my side. <laughs> on that topic well and i guess i don't disagree i just try to be really humble about it because right. you know yeah i mean as far as everyone else out there chris always tells me this he's like he's like to everyone else out in the audience you are an expert i'm like yeah well maybe if you look at it that way but right. i look as an the extra i used to look at, at the explanation of an expert as someone that knows mm -hmm. absolutely everything yep and nobody yep. will ever know absolutely no. everything you know, but yeah. maybe, uh, you know, I've kind of changed that view since uh, since last year. So that's another thing I learned at Phantasm from, from you guys. I'm yeah. hoping that Jeff can make it this year. I'm going to twist mm -hmm. his arm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Ken, I would love to I would love to have Padre there, too. I need to find out if I'm even going, Bill. Hint, hint. <laughs> You're going. <laughs> you, you, can, you can sit with me. It's okay. Um, oh, you got to yeah. go. I mean, you got to get the band back together. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's funny on the expert topic. I've actually been on radio um, or podcast interviews with other people from other teams. And they were called an expert by the interviewer. And they actually stopped the interview and corrected them. And they're like, no, I'm not an expert. I'm like, why waste the time? Yeah. I would never call myself an expert, but I don't get upset <laughs> when someone no. calls me one. No, but and I, I, I see that a lot. I respect people because I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, I don't know everything, but I know a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I know a lot. I know, I know enough to get myself in trouble. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. But, um, you know, but on the other side of the coin, people that consider themselves experts when they've only been doing this for three or four or five years, six months. So, yeah. You could learn a lot in that time, but mm -hmm. you know, when you got someone that's been doing it, you know, 50 years, you know, or 40, 35, 40, 50 years, you know, give them a little bit, you know, give them a little respect, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. I respect everybody. I don't care if you've been doing this for four months or 40 years. Mm -hmm. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, their views. I've learned things from people that, wow, you know, I never heard that that theory before. I'll think, let me think about that, you know. Just re let's all yeah. respect one another and, mm -hmm. you know, not try to one-up one another. I just I just hate that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and, and the, the haters because so-and-so has made a TV show or this one made on Netflix or something. And I, I sit there and go, well, I never, I never seen this person before in my life, but I, I don't know everybody, mm -hmm. you know. But you know, just mm -hmm. learn from one another. <laughs> you know, try to be humble. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you have an attitude, and Jeff wants me to tell this story, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> you know, I've put people in their place. You know, who like, who do you think you are? I'm like, well, you know, I think I'm Joe Frank. Actually, I know I'm Joe Frankie, but that's it. You know, mm -hmm. people that have big swollen heads because they have been on TV and have had a TV show. 
and you know everybody they, they got a bunch of fanboys following them around stuff like that like you know. mm-hmm. yep. so those are the people that sometimes they need to be put in their place yeah you know? that, that, that's always my favorite is when i get asked you know well what's your experience or you know what what you know what are your qualifications or have you ever been on tv and that's just like okay would you like me to start rattling off my list because <laughs> i don't rattle it off usually being on tv does isn't a qualification it no. shouldn't be no it shouldn't but be. that's what people look for there's a lot of people i've seen on tv that is cringeworthy i'd be sitting mm-hmm. there and go, oh i can't believe they just said that you know <laughs> but you know it's not like i'm going to send them a private message and say you know you're a, you're a jerk you know we just say that for her. but there are people that will People calling mm-hmm. each other out on social media. So look, if you have a problem with somebody or something they've said, send them a private message. Why do you got to throw it out there for everyone to see? And then they draw back at you. Now you look, you both look like idiots. Mm-hmm. Nobody wins those things. Nope. Always take the high road. Even though someone may have insulted you, you know, or you could come back with, you know, hey, thanks, you know, or, mm-hmm. or something like that. Come back with a, a witty uh, comeback that makes them feel like, they could dangle their feet from a dime, you know. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things for commenting on my it. post, you just increased my algorithm. <laughs> like Ed used to say, don't give it recognition, it'll go away. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it hurts. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt sometimes, but you know, I told people, look, I learned from some from some good people who I knew very intimately. Mm-hmm. Don't insult them in front of me because because you you're insulting me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's you know, that's my job to protect someone that's not here anymore to, to protect themselves. Right. Don't speak poorly about somebody. If you don't believe in their work or what their teachings or their findings or their methods, that's fine. Mm-hmm. We're all different, you know, and if you can voice that opinion respectfully, okay, but don't come out and call people names and accuse them of things that when you never even met them, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and that's what drives me. It drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, but I can't control what other people do. We can only control how we react to what they do. (laughs) Right. Uh, Jeff says, he who has the most YouTube followers is my gauge as to who's the best. And I guess I'm probably one of the worst on Jeff's gauge because I have 18. (laughs) And I have 18 less. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I know know Jeff's just laughing. He's uh, a smiley face. And I, I need to remind some of the other viewers that Jeff is a jokester because <laughs> in a couple of shows, he's upset some people. <laughs> well, people and not intentional, but they just took it the wrong a way. Very controversial topic. Mm-hmm. You know, but Jeff, I, I put Jeff up there with, with the best of them. He knows what oh, he's yeah. doing. He knows what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, he gets a little animated sometimes when he disagrees, which is fine. I try to talk him down off the ledge. Yep. <laughs> he's learning. <laughs> No, I, I'm actually uh, gathering some stuff that Jeff's going to help me with on the tech side. So, because I need to, for some of our presentations, I need to have the uh, video removed or the audio removed yeah. from video because um, it's been, I signed uh, NDAs at a location and I can't, mm. sh- I can share the audio. I just can't share the video. And of course, all the evidence is on the video, not the audio that we took. Well, that's another thing, you know, with Jeff, and I mean this in the kindest way. Mm-hmm. Jeff will help anybody. Yep. He, he'll help anybody to the point where he overwhelms himself, but he won't complain about it. Right. I'm like, dude, you're taking on too much. I even feel bad. He helped me out big time last year. Mm-hmm. And I felt bad because I know how much work go, is involved in it. But he did it for me, and it was a great success. He helped me out with a, with a video that I used at my lecture, mm-hmm. and people loved it. It was great. Yep. But thank you, Jeff, for that. All yep. kidding aside. You know. Yeah, I, I need to keep writing books so I can keep paying Jeff in books. <laughs> the last time he did a video for me, I sent him an autograph book. <laughs> yeah, he pays me. He pays me by sticking my stickers on his car. <laughs> That's his we'll get, on his car. <laughs> yeah, when we get the lighthouse book, I'll sign it and then I'll send it to you to sign it and then you can send it to Jeff. Uh, he doesn't want my signature. He's still looking <laughs> for a uh, Jeff. He's still looking for a, a, a eight by ten glossy. <laughs> I think I got all of them left. Oh, I got to redo mine. I had to throw all of mine away. Yeah, that was mine's about three years old. I should probably do another one, but just more gray. Yeah, I, I actually I need to get with Bill to redo mine. It just needs a swap out of a logo. <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But you're definitely mm-hmm. going to Phantasm. You got to be there. We'll see. I might Bill's get books somewhere else. Bill's just playing games. <laughs> gonna hook you up if not you're coming to see me 
Uh, but what if I book something? Well, well then I'll come see you. I'll see you. <laughs> I'm still, I've been invited to uh, yeah, Fest in New Orleans. So I'm still trying to figure out how to get out there because they're doing everything 100% for the nonprofit. And they're not paying any of their talent and everybody's volunteering time, but it's like, uh, and then, you know, I really want to get out there and help Howard because it's a really, for a really good cause. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've done that for many years and gone places on my own dime and yep. it's not that I really care. It's just, it gets to the point where you can't afford it. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm retired now. Yep. It's, you know, you got to watch every penny mm -hmm. prices going up and everything. It's just really tough. Mm -hmm. Where I won't complain is if you're helping someone or if you're helping a family, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and for people that may have questions about this, look, it is okay to ask that your expenses be covered. We never charge a dime to help people. Mm -hmm. You know, however, if you're traveling, we just came back from a five day trip to New York, upstate New York. And, um, you know, the family was, was very gracious and they covered all of our expenses. The family owned a diner, so they fed us very well. <laughs> You know, um, I drove there because I was only about three hours away, car, mm -hmm. car ride. But still, yep. you know, that's five days out of your life. That's time away mm -hmm. from your job or your family. Uh, you know, I know personally, I'll tell you, my wife wasn't thrilled about it, but she she knows what I do mm -hmm. and accepts it, you yep. know. But, you know, again, that's five days out of your life. You can't get back. But you, you, you know, you've done that in service to others. And mm -hmm. You know, I think we did a great job and brought some peace to the family. And that's my payment. Right. Seriously. That's my mm -hmm. payment. To get a phone call or an email or they look you in the eye and, and it, with tears in their eyes, it's like, thank you so much mm -hmm. for helping me and my family. Um, you know, and that, I mean, you know, you can't put a dollar amount on that. No. And everyone here knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You cannot put a dollar amount on that. And even though it might sting you a little bit financially, that takes the sting away. It really yeah. does. You know. mm -hmm. And cases like that take the sting away from when you have cases like the one I had where the poor 70 some year old woman was crying on the phone that she's not crazy, but we had no evidence of paranormal activity in her house. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like at that point in time, you're looking for the next case that you could help someone. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some case. We've got one in particular case. We've spent probably three to three and a half months on right now. Mm -hmm. And the client who's desperate, or they say they're desperate for help, is not cooperating, mm -hmm. isn't yeah. doing what we're asking of her. And mm -hmm. it's very frustrating. It's like one side of you is like, oh, I, I've had it. I'm just going to write this person off. And the other side is you're torn. It's a tug of war. It's like, right. I won't do that. I'll never mm -hmm. give up on somebody because there may be some truth to this. Right. She may have an issue. Mm -hmm. But yeah. and, and her pain is real. What you're being torn, uh, you know, from opposite sides, and you want to help this person, mm -hmm. but the best help you can do, give a person, is to help them help themselves. And if that person doesn't have skin in the game, and you're asking them to do something, oh, I can't do that, or I'm not comfortable doing that, or it won't let me do that, mm -hmm. and like I can't do it for you, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and these are not not hard tasks. Right. They're not. They're not hard asked. They're. They're actually pretty simple. Mm -hmm. But you know, if if you know, they're like, well, can you come here and bring me here? Can you bring me to to the church? Mm -hmm. I can't go in the church. I'm like, well, technically, physically, yes, I could, but I've got to go home. So like, you spend days, weeks, months, years in someone's home helping them investigate. You got to be careful because mm -hmm. eventually you're going to pack home, pack up, and go home. Right. And you don't want all holy hell to break loose because you stirred the hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what a lot of people, a lot of inexperienced people and groups do is they go in, they'll stir up a hornet's nest, and then, you know, holy crap happens after <laughs> they leave. And then what are you doing? And now they're mad at you mm -hmm. because of what something you did or said caused activity to spike. And now I got to live with this. You, you got to mm -hmm. be careful there. Yep. You know, that's yeah. why you don't go in like gangbusters and you don't mm -hmm. go in like some tough guy. Like, yeah, come on. If this is the king to hell, why don't you rise up and get me? They're going to. It's going to happen. Trust yep. me. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Yep. Not, not until you're at your weakest point. When you're yep. at your most vulnerable point, it's going to strike. Mm -hmm. It's going to sit there and go, ha ha. You, you know, you asked for it. 
you know, you got to be careful what you say, even if it's for all for show. Right. Which actually makes it worse, in my opinion. But yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. We're probably out of time, aren't we? We we are. I didn't even realize what time it was. It time goes by fast. Well, I'm always out of time when I'm talking. It, it it is, and we didn't even take our second commercial break. And I pissed so, off. Sorry, off. Todd. <laughs> <laughs> but Todd did comment earlier in the private chat um, regarding the roast. He's like, now that is a fun idea. We can set it up as a web webinar through the radio station. I, I, I mean, I think, I think it's a good idea. If you mm -hmm. guys all agree. I, I think mean, that we've works. Got, we've got a, a bunch of people we could ask. Yep. Yeah. I'll work with Todd on that one and uh, see what we can come up with and who we can get on there again um, on there. Um, but thank you again, Joe, for joining. Always a great oh, time chatting you. with you. It's been my honor, really. I love yeah. I love talking to you. You're my sister from another mister. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, definitely thank you everyone for watching. Uh, next week we will be joined by Father Kenneth Torres. He'll be talking about his new book and some of his uh, recent experiences that he had. And I believe the week after that we have Jeff Schlachter on. Um, to talk about his stuff. Um, like he just says, he uses the gates of hell question as his opener for investigations just to cut to the chase. Um, so <laughs> we'll be making some jokes and having fun um, with everybody that's coming on the show. But we always do. You know, guys know we take things seriously when we're actually out there investigating and helping others. Um, but again, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Joe, for joining us. And thank we will God bless everybody. I love we'll you all. We'll see you next week. Right, bye. Bye. The truth is here and now on WLTKDB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com. Thank you.